have a quick word of prayer before we begin. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. Lord, I pray that our hearts are ripe and ready to receive of your word, Lord God, and I pray that you will remove me from the equation so that there will only be you, Lord. We love you, we thank you, and we give you all the praise. In your name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. All right, let's get to it, people. Amen. I'm excited about the word that God has given me today. The title that God has given me today is entitled, more than a feeling. More than a feeling. And I have a question for you today. How are you doing today? Is everybody doing good today? Yes, yes. I like that answer. That's a good one. How are you feeling today? It is well. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. See, I'm tired. That's a valid, valid, valid answer. Because there is a difference between how you're doing and how you're feeling. Because sometimes, even on Sunday mornings, when that alarm clock goes off, you would think it was the voice of the devil. Because that alarm clock, man, that thing is no joke, boy. When you're in a real good sleep, and you finally get a good snore going, and that alarm closed off, you just want to take it and chuck it out the window. I feel I got some chuckers in here. <laughs> I see, amen, sister, amen. You know, there's something about that sound that it, ee, ee, ee. I'm like, you couldn't come up with something more like serene and just tranquil. I mean, come on. Who came up with that? That had to be somebody that was with the devil. But my point is how we feel can sometimes be different than how we're doing. Because we feel a lot. As people, we have lots and lots of feeling all the time. So what God was showing me is our feelings have a big impact on our lives. And if we're not careful, we can allow the feelings to overcome us and to beset us from our goals and to change who we are and how we act. Our emotions are so, so strong. And one of the things that I want to talk about is the power and the limitations of our feelings. Now, our, our feelings are by design. God created us with feelings. And they help to enrich our experiences they help to enhance our experiences, and it allows us to have a full life. I mean, feelings are good. Uh, how do you feel about your wife? Don't, you know, if you don't feel a certain way, don't say nothing, because I don't want no fights going on here in the church. But if you love your wife, you say, I, I, I feel good about my wife. When I see her, she makes me feel good. She says nice things to me. And, I, and, and when your wife says something nice to you or your girlfriend says something nice to you, you feel all proud, right? You feel good. You know, but when they say something bad to you or they say something mean to you, it could be devastating, right? It could go the other way. So our feelings have such a powerful effect on our day-to-day -day lives, on who we are, how we act, how we respond to things. Our feelings truly do have a huge impact on us. And in Jeremiah, the 17th chap chapter, in the ninth verse, it says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. That is amazing to think that that's what the Bible says about our emotions, about our feelings. Because our feelings can be manipulated. They can very, very easily be manipulated. And I know that it's true because it happens to me all the time. It happens to me all the time. And if we're not careful, all of a sudden, that joyous person that most people see you as, and you always got that smile on your face, and everybody knows you by your smile, but yet somebody or some circumstance can come along and make you feel away. 
And all of a sudden, everything that is good about you, everything that people know you as, gets shaken to the core. And the things that can impact us are so great. Sometimes it's just our circumstances. Sometimes it's our health. Sometimes it's even biological. Our feelings can be shaped by. But the thing about it is that we have to understand that our feelings are one thing, but we can't allow the foundation of our faith to be based on our feelings. The foundation of our faith has to be solely and squarely placed on the word of God and our relationship with him. Because that should withstand all things. Our relationship with God should go beyond everything, every doubt, every, every, every sway, every mood, everything. We have to make sure that we're firmly and really grounded in our relationship. And that means we have to know who he is in our, in our life. That means we got to know what his promises are for our life. That means in order for me to have a good relationship with my wife, I have to talk to her and tell her about how I feel. Tell her about the things I'm going through. So my wife can't help me. She can't be my helpmate, right, if she doesn't know what I'm going through. Even if she wanted to help me, if I refuse to talk to her, there is very little that she can do for me. And the same thing is, is, exists in our relationship with Christ. If we keep it all bottled in inside of us and never go to God with our problems, never go to God with our worries, never go to him with our hurts, then how can he do anything for us? We have to have a relationship with God where we go to him with everything that is on our mind. And we have to be honest with him with what we're going through so that he can help us, so that he can be there for, for us. So God wants to be there in the midst of our relationship with us, but he needs to be that firm foundation for us. And once again, we can't allow our emotions to sway us, but we have to point to the word of God. The word of God has to be, since I went on a cruise, I'm now a nautical, nautical person, so the word of God has to be our true north. Has everybody heard about what the true north is? For you, those that don't know, before they had all these, these, these electronic gadgets and gizmos that can guide the ships, the people at sea used to use the stars to guide them. And one star that they would always depend on is what they called true north. It was a star that they could look at, that they would know that they could say, if I could just find that star... It will help me to find my way. So that true north would always guide them to where they need to be. But I'm telling you today that our true north needs to be firmly in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that every time our emotions try to overwhelm us and try to bring us down and try to, to get into us and bring us into a place of submission to the enemy, we have to say, I am not going to receive this because the word of God says differently. I don't have to receive this from you, enemy. I don't have to be all down and gloomy because of this circumstance or because my heart feels a certain way. I don't have to be because the word said so. So we need to drop to our knees and we need to look up to our God and we have to look up our eyes to, to the Lord where our strength is and we have to say, God, I'm dependent on you even though things don't look good right now. Even though things don't feel good right now. I'm reminded about David in the Bible. David was a man after God's own heart. But David was an emotional individual. His emotions got him in trouble all the time. All the time. First of all, he's out there and he sees a young woman and she's beautiful, so he covets this woman. He allowed his emotions to get the best of him. Now, most people would have been like, oh, okay, yeah, she's pretty, yeah, yeah, you know, you had some thoughts, you move on. 
he didn't just do that, but he allowed his motions to go and get this man killed so he could have his wife. Talking about allowing your emotions to get the better of you. I mean, I know some of us are bad, but I hope you aren't that bad. But again, his emotions overtook him and caused him to do things that are not of God. But yet God said he was a man of his own heart. Of his own heart. So after his own heart. So it shows us how powerful those emotions can be. And like I said, our word, we have to base our life and everything that we have on the word of God. And what happens in our life, right, is we have experiences. We go through things. And those things that we go through should be the bedrock for our, for our relationship with God and how we can get over in the future. Why? Because if we see God do something and perform a miracle in our life or he answers a prayer in our life, then we now have a basis for saying, you know what? I know that God can do great things in my life. I know that God can answer prayers. How many of you know that God answers prayers? Raise your hands. All right, so you have a basis point. You have some foundation that we should build on so that when tough times come, we don't give up on God because we know what he can do. He has proved it to you before. So that means if he's done it to you for you before, he can do it for you again. And that is our truth. That is our true north. So when our situations come and when our emotions try to get the best of us, we could say, I don't need to depend on that. It's more than a feeling. It's the truth of what God said and what God did in my life. And I am going to base my decisions on that. Let me show you something. Have anybody seen those shows where, like, for example, um, they have a motorcyclist, right? And he says, and they have him, they're going to, like, he's going to jump over this big, long distance. Evil Knievel, that's right, right? Everybody knows who Evil Knievel is. They set up this jump, and he runs, and he jumps over this large chasm, and he makes it to the other side. And everybody's like, wow. That's amazing, right? That's so amazing. That is awesome. Then what do they do? They have to ramp it up another level. So what do they do? They bring in a couple, a bunch of vans or some buses, and now they put those vans and those buses in that same space and say, now jump over it. And everybody gets all nervous, and then he goes and he jumps over it. And then what do they do? They got to bump it up another notch. So then they put a ring of fire on one side and another ring of fire on the other side and say, jump through that. And then he jumps through that as well. And it shows you that our emotions keep putting more and more obstacles in our way. God has already proven that he can help you jump over your obstacles. But yet the enemy keeps putting more and more emotions and more and more situations in your way, trying to deceive you and trick you into believing that you can't do it when God has already showed you that you can. But yet we get, we get a little bit nervous. We get a little nervous when we start to see the obstacles. Brendan, are you in there? Brendan, if you're in there, come out for a second. This is my son, Brendan. <laughs> See, I only have him do my jumping stunts. He's my stunt double. <laughs> See, we look just like. <laughs> See, in my old days, I would have did this all myself, but now because of insurance clauses and all this other stuff, I have to get him for a double. So, Brendan, I want you to jump from this thing over here to just over past this. Now, before you go and jump over that, do you believe that he can go and jump from this spot to this spot? Who believes he can't do that? I could probably do that. That's beside the point. But the point is, we all believe he could do this, right? Okay, Brenda, go ahead and jump over that spot. 
See, I wasn't even expecting him to do that. I was just, I was expecting him to run and jump. He got to get all fancy and, and broad jump over it. Don't show off. What has that proven? This is now a proven point that this is capable for him to go from here and jump over to this spot. We now have a reference point that we are absolutely sure of because it has been done and it has been proven. And everybody here agreed that it could be done, right? Even before he did it, we trusted in his ability to jump from there to there. And then not only did we not have to just believe in it because of his physical appearance, the distance that we saw, but then we had him do it and prove without a shadow of a doubt that he could jump from here to there. And then he did it. And now everybody here is convinced that he could do it. Everybody is, right? You in the back, can I use your baby daughter to put in between here? And lay, and lay her down for her to jump? Do you mind if I use your daughter? To just... Wait a minute, but why? But why? We have all established the fact that he could jump from here to here no matter what. We have a fact. We know it from our mind. We have visually seen it. We have experienced it. But now all of a sudden... When emotions come into this situation, we start to have doubt because we're afraid to place the small child in this situation. Nothing has changed about the distance in which it needs to be jumped. Nothing has changed. This is the same circumstance that we went through before. The only thing that has changed is now our emotions have now got involved in the situation in the form of the child, and it makes us start to wonder, but what if? But what if he slips when he starts to jump over? What happens if, if all of a sudden he catches a cramp when he tries to jump over this? But we can't, we can't, we, he might not make it, but this is easy for him. He could catch a cramp and still make it over that. But our emotions got involved. And all of a sudden, facts and, and, and well-established principles that God has taught us and he has showed us, he has proven to us, he has made us through, all of a sudden we start to question only because our emotions got involved. People, I'm here to tell you that we can't allow our emotions to take our eyes off of what Christ has already proven in our lives. God has proven to so many of us such great miraculous things in our lives. I mean, some of us have had some major, major miracles happen in our lives. Raise, my, raise your hand if you've had a miracle. I'm not just saying a blessing. I'm talking about a miracle happen in your life. Look at all of these hands that have had miracles happen in our lives. Now, if God can perform a miracle in our lives, then how come when we're trying to figure out how to pay a bill, we can't have faith in God? He did a miracle for you. He can't give you a couple extra dollars? What kind of principles is that? See, God has created a situation in which he has created a theorem. You know about theorems and, 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 and proofs in mathematics? Once you prove a certain thing, there become certain laws that are irrefutable. We have proven a theorem in your life that if X happens and Y happens, Z will happen. God has proven to himself so that no matter what happens, we should believe and trust that God will provide. God will perform for you because he has proven it in this point, in this point, and he has showed us without a shadow of a doubt that he can and he will do it for you. We have a God that goes beyond 
the emotions. We have a God that goes beyond what we feel. And he has established a truth that is above all things. All logic, all reason, he goes beyond all of that. All of that. You see, I, I, we used to watch, my parents used to watch a show when I was young called Star Trek. Anybody ever watch Star Trek? We got some Trekkies in here. <laughs> and one of my favorite characters in the show was Spock. Spock was a bad man. Spock could do pretty much anything. He was smart. He was strong. He could do the Vulcan grip on you, and you'd be like, ugh. And all he did is just do like this, and all of a sudden, you're all cramped up. Spock was amazing. Now, Spock was an interesting character because the, the Vulcans, in which he was one of, they have a certain characteristic in which everything was always dictated on what? Logic. Was always dictated on logic. Spock could do nothing if logic didn't dictate. And all of his conclusions were firmly based on logic and logic alone. But Spock was a little bit different from the other Vulcans. For what reason? Because he was tainted by his human part. <laughs> they, they always talked about that. He's tainted. But his human side of him caused him to have emotions. And his emotions sometimes would, would, would have an impact on his decisions. But what I was realizing is that our lives cannot be just one thing. Because logic would dictate certain things. For example, our logic would dictate that if a mother sees a child and a child is, is drowning in, a, in water, that they're not going to dive in and try to save that child because they don't know how to swim. But let me ask you this question. How many mothers in here are going to jump in that water after their child, even if they can't swim? What? But that's not logical. That's not logical. That doesn't make sense. But I guarantee you every mother in here is diving in that water and they're going to figure out how to swim. They will figure out on the spot how to swim. That's just the way it is. Logic says that if your child is trapped under a car or inside a burning car, that you can't lift that car up. But we have heard of circumstances and when a mother's child is in danger, that the mother is lifting up the car in, to, in order for the child to get out of the car. But that defies logic. See, 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 emotion says things also. Emotions also get involved in our life and, and, and give us things too that says that doesn't make sense. For example, emotion says that if somebody does something wrong, they deserve the consequences. I mean, logic says they deserve the consequences. But, 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 but I, I heard of a man that looked down on a world that was filled with sinners and people that were unrighteous and unworthy and didn't deserve anything. But for some strange reason, logic said, I shouldn't help them. But yet anyway, he left his throne and glory beside his father to come down to an earth that was filled with sin and put himself down and sacrifice himself. He made himself dirty for us. But logic says that doesn't make sense. But emotion said, I love them. I love them. And because I love them, I am going to sacrifice everything. Everything about myself I will sacrifice. I will give up my crown. I will give up my reputation as being pure. I will give up my everything that I am, my power, and I will go down to the earth. That's not logical. That's not logical, but he did it because the emotions said I should. His love for us said I should. 
emotions, a logic. Logics are nothing more than truth. They need to exist together. But we can't allow one to overdo the other. It takes balance in our lives. Balance on what the Word of God says about everything. What does God say about our lives? What does God say to do? That's what we need to be firm and established on. So when we look into our lives, we understand that God wants us to just focus in on the truth. And we have to have that relationship with him so that we can establish that truth, so that we can go beyond these petty things. Because when we allow our emotions to get us, we start fighting. There probably will be no such thing as war if emotions run allowed, uh, involved. Right? Like, what happened with the, um, the, the nuclear arms race? One person, got a, one person got a slingshot, the other one got an arrow. The other person got a gun, the other one got a Uzi. One, the other one got a tank, the other one got a, a nuclear b missile. Then all of a sudden we're in the arms race and the nuclear race. And just because that person has something, we got to have it. Because we always afraid of what the next person's going to do. So I, gotta, I have to protect myself. I have to have more. We're always fighting. We're always at war. We're always going to be that way because our emotions are guiding us. And when you don't have Christ in your life and you're driven by your emotions, whoo, you can make some really bad decisions. You can make some really bad decisions. Really bad decisions. I see these kids all the time on the news taking people's lives because of how they feel. I see kids all the time, they go to a nightclub and somebody makes them look bad. So they go and they get a gun and they're going to show them. They forfeit the rest of their lives because they can't control their emotions. How many people heard about John Morant? This dude has, what, a $200 million contract? And he put that at jeopardy because he's playing basketball and a kid threw a ball at him. So he's going to go in his house and get a gun and start waving it at him. You got $200 million. At least hire somebody else to go get their gun. I mean, good Lord, come on. Come on. But my pride is this, people. Our emotions are a powerful thing. A powerful thing. And when used to God's glory, they can enhance our lives, enhance our ability, enhance our gifts, enhance our callings, enhance our power. But when used poorly, it can devastate us. It can handicap us. So we have to learn that it needs to be more than just a feeling. It has to be rooted and founded in a strong relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.